Step IMO pod with three young kings Sukali, DT and Uzi Pondis In my opinion we're the pod of the year We mix the banter with the edutainment Sukali you know be the girl them sugar Don't talk DT, designate driver To me to Susa, Uzi takes it too far You never know how far you can go if you don't try We are them boys, we're not cohesive money, money, money. Come on, come on, you already know the sun's out Which means I'm happy which means sun's out, glass out. Come on, glasses are out, glasses are on. It's the boys at my in my opinion podcast. We this are back life. again. Huh? No, no, not you. The the, the production guys. You guys are interrupting my introduction, man. Sorry, it's starting. Let's carry on. <laughs> anyway, we're back again. It's your boys at in my, in my opinion podcast. I'm your boy Melinda the Fourth, aka Sukali. DT, aka Don't Talk, Just Listen. It's your boy Uzi, aka Uzoma. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's an invisible gun <laughs> to his head <laughs> that's forced him to be present today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, if you're listening to us on audio, get, get the video so you can understand why we're getting onto him. But listen, oh, as you man. can see, I'm wearing glasses today because we have a very serious topic with a very serious guest, serious. special guest. Sharp, a sharp mind. Mm-hmm. You know, you people say podcasts should be cancelled, but we're here to show you today that mm-hmm. we should not be cancelled. Nope. Mm. We have the best, in my opinion, yes, sir. commentator that I follow personally. So me, I'm... not sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're not yeah, sorry. I'm never sorry. Un- unapologetic. <laughs> unapologetic. I like that. Well, what's the yeah? What's the name? Why not sorry? Uh, well, so it's Femi underscore sorry. I basically figured I say stuff that tends to annoy certain people. Mm. Figured I have an inbuilt apology in everything Just that in I case. do. <laughs> so like don't ask me for one. It's already yeah. there. It's Check there. The username. I've done it. I've said it. Sorry. I don't need <laughs> Nah, how are you like doing that. though, Femi? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm sweating, but I'm good. Yeah, it's, it's hot. All of us. It's hot. The All studio is definitely hot. We appreciate having you on the podcast. Thanks for the invite. Yes, no, like, we follow you personally. Uh, we love the, commenta- the commentary you give on the political landscape. And you make it palatable. Understand? That means understandable. By the way. Uh, <laughs> You're making it palatable for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because he's the word, the, 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 the grammar police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we say big words... <laughs> We have to. He then, gets on to us. He gotcha. gets on to gotcha. us. So we have to then define them. But no, like you really help people understand it at a lower level. You know, sometimes politicians they say big words all to confuse words. us. GDP. Uh-huh. All these things. <laughs> 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 that's <a> GDP. <laughs> that's well, this quite self-explanatory, <laughs> but okay. I understand. So yeah, watching you is great. I mean, we're gonna get into the topic of today, but before we do that, we normally start with something a little bit light. So a lot of our it's guests. It's not light. <laughs> Okay, it's not light, but in the sense of a lot of our guests that come on, they have their niche. Mm-hmm. So sometimes they don't get a lot of time to deviate away from that, sorry, deviate from that niche to give their views on other topics. Okay. So our dilemma section helps you do that. Show a bit of your personality. Okay. You know what I mean? We'll see if you're sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, take you out of your comfort then, zone. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna read a dilemma that was sent and it would just be great to hear your opinion on it. Oh, this sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's definitely right up your your alley, I believe, anyway. So, uh, I, by the way, I'm Ugandan, so I'm going to read it in Ugandan accent. Okay, so, cool. cool, yeah, cool, cool. Don't, don't be alarmed when my accent changes. Um, are you okay, Uzi? I'm okay. I, okay. I'm just sensing, it. I'm yeah, sen- se- I'm sensing a lot of anxiousness from this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just on the edge, isn't it? I'm like, relax. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally so- firm. Relax. <laughs> it's very relax. Like, you know when you have someone you actually respect? <laughs> 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 I feel like I have to talk <laughs> proper. Relax, yeah. Okay, I'm relax, sorry. Dude, I'm even, he's losing the, you know, the... The accent he puts here, he just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Calm down. This is a Liverpool street. <laughs> I feel like I'm, yeah, I'm on saying, Downing Street. Yeah, just calm okay. down. Is my, yeah, ansi- is my anxiety cool making you feel uncomfortable? Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. Just, okay, I'm calming yeah, down. Relax. Okay, let me relax. You need to take a deep breath to support you. I can also assist. Okay. I'm ready. I'm sorry, relax. I'm for the mouth. I'm okay. relaxed now. Let's go, let's go. Okay. Kaakati. Yes, that's it. I am in an interracial marriage. Hey. My husband is black and I am white. Okay. We met when we were in school in Australia. Mm. Mm, beautiful country. Very beautiful. So we've been together since we were 16. Mm. So in total, together for 15 years. Mm. Emma, quick maths. How, how old are they now? If they were. <laughs> so They've 16. been together since they were 16. Mm. They've been together 15 years. 16 plus 15 one. years. 31. You helped him. I feel, you I mean, didn't help me, you bro. Did, you, did, bro. Know, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear okay, me. 31. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're 31. 31. <laughs> <laughs> we got married after we graduated university. And when he got a job offer, we moved to the UK. Mm. 
Mm. United Kingdom. The United Kingdom. <laughs> mm-hmm. The biggest kingdom mm. in the smallest <laughs> island. Now, <laughs> though we are married, we are in very different friendship circles. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. My friends are more liberal, while his are more upper class conservative. <laughs> Mostly oh, friends yeah. he met working in the city. Mm-hmm. As time has gone on, I've noticed he has changed since we moved here, and his views have become very right wing and on the extreme end. Very right wing. Mm-hmm. You understand? Hmm. First, he voted leave on the referendum, saying there were too many immigrants who are lazy and claim benefits from the government. Can you Can imagine? Wait, wait, the husband is the black one, right? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Proceed. Proceed. Taking our jobs. But yeah. You know they like that. <laughs> that line. Then it was his liking to Trump. Happy he was building a wall to keep out the Mexican because all, all they do, according to him, is rape and murder. Hey, this, they lived in Australia before, right? Yeah, they lived in Australia. They, they they're moved immigrants to, the UK. to, to the, the UK. UK. Yeah, yes, yeah. and want to build a wall to keep immigrants gotcha. out. No, mm-hmm. it's fine. We're yeah, here. Fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the straw that broke the camel's back for me was his extreme views on the Rwanda policy. His support for Suella Braberman and her language. You know, she over talks. What is it? Suella Braberman. Uh, uh, <laughs> Suella Braberman. <laughs> Suella Braberman. She's the uh, Home Suella. Secretary of is the that UK. Is Suella? Yeah, yeah. Suella. Okay. Mm-hmm. She's, she's also an immigrant, by the way. Uh, Suella mm. Braberman. We have two young sons, mm. and I'm worried he will instill these bigoted views on them. Mm. I am questioning the future of our marriage because though he is a great husband, I cannot stomach his views. What should I do? Yeah, wow. so, so many points to break <laughs> down here. <laughs> For starters, on the nation, on the relationship itself, the the main piece of advice I give to people in relationships mm. is don't judge somebody based on how they treat you, or not not just on how they treat you. Judge them how how they treat people from whom they have nothing to gain. Ooh. If he's willing to <laughs> throw all immigrant people immigrating from the to, the to UK under the bus if he's willing to support the narrative of a government that basically crushes those that have the least power he does not <laughs> care about people in general mm. and so when the chips are down when he has to really put his own interests against yours he will choose himself every time wow <laughs> i don't know what i mean can we go on to the main topic <laughs> <laughs> i feel like is there anything more to add <laughs> what well, okay so actually I don't know if you saw this Nigerian guy that was trending trending <coughs> last week because obviously the UK are saying that, uh, you know, I have my statistics here. I mm-hmm. should even bring them up that they're going to ban students bringing dependents over mm-hmm. that come via, you know, the student visa. visa route. Yeah. And it is said that the Nigerian students <coughs> make up the majority of I people mean, that bring their families over. Um, and I think it says... 485,000 sponsored study visas were granted last year. Um, of those, 135,000 visas were granted to dependents. Um, and Nigeria had the highest number of dependents, 60,923. And their dependents <coughs> were actually more than the students coming from Nigeria. Hmm. So I think the students were about 40,000 um, Nigerian students, Nigerian but yet students. they bought 60,000 dependents. So did you see the Nigerian guy that was trending? Mm-hmm. That um, they, he was interviewed on BBC mm. and he said, yes, this is something they do in Nigeria. Like they actually don't really come here to study. They just use that route to get here. I liken him to the guy in the dilemma. Right, that, right. Because now you're here, mm-hmm. you, you want to mess like you throw up. Uh-huh. Everyone under the bus. For, for everyone under the what bus. What do you want to from you when the chips are down? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm. What do we think of himself. people like that? I don't know, you know, because um, for me, I, I don't know. To me, I feel weird because um, I'm always someone that likes to face my front, innit? Mm. And for people like that, you know, like, though, it, it kind of gives you that impression of, you know, like, I don't know if you've seen, like, you know, when you cross the bridge mm-hmm. and once you get over, you cut, you cut it. Mm. So that way, boom, no to way. hell with you guys. By the way. Because essentially, why would you go on um, national television and bay up that whole situation. Mm. Because one thing I know about Nigerians, which I would say is obviously we do, if the loophole is there, we, we do take advantage of it. Mm. At the end of the day, it is legal, it's not illegal. So not what's either. the problem? Mm. So in terms of now zooming in on saying, oh, we make up the proportion of this amount, I don't think that makes sense. Mm. And people with that kind of mentality. And I think like, like Lafemi said, it's hard to, to, to say anything from that because you can tell a lot about people's character mm. and how they treat other people. You can kind of be like, ah, no, so for me, people like that, man, I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't know what to say for those people, man, to be honest with you. It's just the framing of it. Like, yes, 
I mean, I've done Erasmus. I've gone to study um, law in in France, and part of that was to just be there to get mm. to experience the right. culture. But they, the way they framed it, as if there was some sort of cheating going on, that like they were doing something yeah. morally wrong. Right, right. But like, if you come here just to start a life and also to learn. There's nothing morally wrong about that. You're mm-hmm. just trying to do the best for yourself and, and your dependents. But that guy went on TV and it just felt like he just thought, all right, I've got my YouTube channel. If, mm. they, if I go on this show with the BBC, that might give me more clout. Clout, um, exactly. And he didn't care about all the people that he would be allowing the government to then demonize, demonize as these yep. uh, visa cheats or whatever he wanted to call them. Mm. It's disgusting. Yeah, because I found it very interesting that it was mostly Nigerians they were interviewing <laughs> I mean, about this scheme. They, they like doing stuff like that, though. They're going to bring a represent, And that's the thing. They're very good at doing stuff like that. So if they want to like try and obviously, again, if they want to try and shut something down or make, they're going to bring somebody. They're going to bring From one that of community. yours. Mm-hmm. So that way you can't turn around and say, hey, it was them. It was them. Yep. So they're very good at doing stuff like that. That's one of their antics. That's one of their plays. It's what I, it's what I say all the time. Like they keep using this phrase of we've got the most diverse government cabinet in history. <laughs> mm. Yeah. If, I mean, they, they did the race report. Remember that? Uh, yep. few, oh, few, yeah. A couple of years ago. The one that, um, <laughs> A, acknowledged that if you've got a black sounding name or an Middle Eastern sounding name, you have to send more job applications to get a call back by about yep. 70% but said that the reason that might be because the employers assume that if you're from an ethnic minority background, that means you must be lower class. But hey, yep. that's racism too. By the exactly. way. Um, <laughs> um, and they also basically um, said that slavery needs to be, look at the other side of the of the empire, that it wasn't, we have to look at how uh, African people culturally transform themselves into Brits. Basically yep. acting like slavery was just Erasmus with chains. Do you know what I mean? That's right. It, it, and so they did that and the United Nations said, hey, you're, you guys are just trying to normalize white supremacy. That's what basically. the UN said. Mm. And so if you're going to, if that's your agenda of this government, if I was in their shoes, if I wanted to do that, of course I get as many black and brown faces to, to push push that idea as possible. Mm. Exactly. Because then you, then you can't call it racist. You can't. Exactly. Because no. now we have an Asian prime minister, mm-hmm. an Asian home secretary. Mm-hmm. Listen, we had a black, them on the front line. a black so, councillor. My thing yeah. is, the, the guy that was saying this thing, was, is he born there? Which one? The guy that said for the, the one I went on the right. BBC. Yeah. No, he's born Nigerian. Nigerian. He's born in Nigeria. Nigerian. He's Nigerian. Yeah. So he came here. Yeah. Yeah. If he's it's, seen, that's what I'm saying. He's mad. He's seen this. He's a swine, mate. That's what I'm saying. He's mad. He had to come and do a, an apology video because mm. Nigerian, uh, the Nigerian Twitter sphere. You know, that's the wrong thing to do. Yeah. Do, do, you do, you know what I think? Yeah. Like you know when you go through like this happens everywhere, even in a workplace. There's always that person that feels like. I need to sell out everyone in order for they people to accept up. me. Mm. I don't like people like that. Mm. He's one of them. He is. He's and one what, of them. What was funny is Nigerians online were like, yeah, we, we accept your apology. Just come back to Nigeria. Yeah, that's all. That's yeah, all. Just come he back. can't go back. You know? <laughs> he, he can't. He's he can't. done. He can't. He can't. Because Nigeria is like, Nigeria is not... Um, a place you there's not people you think you can offend. I think <laughs> not, not, listen, listen, um, and if mental. you look at look at come on, bruv. Like I'm not surprised that obviously a lot of that population of people that are trying to get out through that is Nigerian. Bruv, the country itself, but we there's a lot of people there, you know. There is. There's, there's a lot really yeah. so like everyone's trying to make not, it. It's not a shock. Mm. Like no, not we're to be, one of the what? Most you're the biggest, most popular. Yes, yeah, most traveled, most there's everything. A lot of people trying to change their lives, mm-hmm. come out of poverty. Like, no, but yeah. another thing that they look at as also is obviously what we actually contribute as well to these other societies because we're more, one of the most traveled um countries mm. in yeah. Africa. Mm. So we we there's no parts of Europe. You can go to, you're not going to find Nigerians. Yep. Just mm. have their own little community there somewhere. Yeah. So, and another thing they don't talk about, again, you're talking about the student stuff, right? Because we also still need to go back to our original the dilemma, dilemma, right? Yeah. But um, they don't, the part they don't talk about is the fees they charge international students. Talk about it. They don't talk about that. They don't. They Do leave that out. Mm-hmm. They don't talk about the amount of money you have to actually pay to, to come, come here and study. Season. Yep. And also healthcare. Health. You don't, you don't get you got, NHS. You don't get NHS. You got to pay for your own healthcare. You got to do all of that stuff. So you don't. They're not coming here for free. Mm. <laughs> so don't make it seem like you're doing them a favor. The government that is, is making a, very good point, a buckload of money from these it international students. It was what students. at that time, anyways. What? When we were it still was, studying, people were paying like, like twelve t- racks. Twelve yes, just pounds. Yeah, literally just to come per, one per term. Per term, mm-hmm. one twelve thousand. Can pounds. you imagine? When we were still studying, that's what they were charging. So I don't even know what they're charging now. Jesus Christ! And you from know what my I mean? from my research, fees are although university fees are quite expensive. It's crazy. Anyways, there would be yeah. more yep. if we didn't have international students. That's international right. Students actually help in terms of oh, what's the term? I've even forgotten the term. But offsetting. Yes, offsetting. offsetting yeah. The, the the amount that we'd have to pay for fees. So I don't know why they keep demonizing. 
international mm-hmm. students. And of course, I'm going to study here for three years. I'm going to miss my family. So yeah, why exactly, not I bring right? them along with me? Exactly. So that, you know, so... But with the other situation, yeah, I, I just thought... Okay, my question only to that is, obviously, to ask you, Femi, is like, do you... Would you say in terms of like, in marriage, in family, kind of like, do you think um, politics should you know, should have an impact in terms of, you know, on that level? I think it has to, to a certain extent. Yes, yeah. there's there's a range. Like, mm-hmm. you can be a little bit different, but if you're really, really different, then you start to get into mass authority of, do you just not care about people? Do you yeah, not care you mm. about people from ethnic minorities? Do you not care mm. about people from the LGBT community? Uh, like, I mean, it also comes down to the fact that there are reasons why people choose certain political views. Mm. Mm. It, it comes down to something that's deep within them and about yeah, who they are personal. as a person. Mm. If I meet a white supremacist on the street or somebody who likes to kill people, I'm not going to be friends with them. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're saying basically, it will, is it difficult to coexist in a relationship if you have different political ideologies? You can, you can, you can have a look. I mean, I think it's the, it's a ridiculous double standard, like in the sense that if I support this team and you support that team, somehow that's okay to say, all right, no, it's not going to work. But <laughs> mm. if you have someone that believes in human rights and the other person doesn't, then you're how, just, how you oh, come on, you got to get, get to get to get. I see what you okay. say. Yeah, so basically, I mean, like, depends on what, to what extent, basically. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. what extreme. extreme. So then yeah. my other question is, are black people allowed to be against immigration in the UK? That's You're a, question, yeah. I think it's about... I think I don't think it's it's a black people issue. I think it's a um, are you? It doesn't make sense to be against immigration. Period. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Because uh, we know that the entire economy is crying out for more immigration. Yeah. Mm. So That's it right. is objectively something that the country needs. Mm. Right. So being against it implies that you simply bought into the narrative that immigrants are bad. Mm. Um, mm. And so if you are a black person doing that, uh, it's just. Uh, I mean. Often we, we forget that we're exposed to the same rhetoric, the same media, the same news as white people. <laughs> yeah. So mm. the same messages get to us and we end up with, with the same attitudes. And it's only because we have the experience of being black on top of that mm. that gives us a different perspective. Mm. Um, so, yeah. So mm. what, what, what should we advise our sister? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, is she oh, right to be scared to question the future yeah, of her marriage? Le- leave his ass. Leave his ass. <laughs> 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 run. Run. But what about the children? They've got run, children. children. No, no, I think they said potential children. Do they have no, kids? No, no, they've got two. Got two, two, two. And yeah. that's what she's worried about. And that that's where he might like, instill oh, his views in oh, the children. Okay, okay, that's where okay. it's tough. Then you have a fight for the rest of your life, yeah. Um, because that guy is going to be a bad influence. Mm. He obviously doesn't does not care. He's going to teach them the same kind of survival of the fittest. If they're if they're if, they're, if they have less power than you, step on them. That kind of stuff. Mm. You don't want your kids learning that. Mm. No. So you've you've got uh, sorry, you've got a, a whole much but big job on your hands there. Wow. So pray and fasting. It seems literally. <laughs> it's not, literally. I think she just got to keep trying to fight to change his mentality mm. in whatever way she can. I mean, ar- arguably, still leave his ass because I, I, I think because I think the because div- I, I know that my parents' marriage was difficult um, w- when I was a kid. There's an argument that says if they'd have just ended it and when I was six, when things started, both of them would have been happier. We would have been happier mm, as, wow. as the kids. So I think if you're gonna, I think it's better to not have that guy in, in the kid's life twenty four seven if he's that toxic. Mm. Okay, so basically, you know, yeah, in, especially coming from an African background, they believe in long suffering mm. when it comes to marriage. You should oh, just yeah, suffer. I, I heard that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you should just suffer for the sake of the children and even for the sake of the the how the family will be perceived if you yeah. get divorced. Mm-hmm. So you're saying in this situation, just cut it. I'm saying Just the, cut the, it. the kids we might cut be better it. off if they see their dad a, a, only a, a lot less. Yeah. Mm. But one only thing I just want to throw into this, right? Imagine, okay, that happens. It go about the separation, and now the kids grown older, right? Mm. And I thought, oh, mom, why did you? Why did what happened with it? Why did you guys separate? And he's like, oh, because of um, dad's political views. <laughs> Do you think? <laughs> will that drop the kids? Well? Yeah. Will that will that sit well with the kids? 
So you've got to show how those political mm. views mm. related to how he was behaving in the home. Mm. Yeah. And the fact that he was teaching the kids those views Jeez, and therefore okay. those kids, you were worried that those kids would then go out and mm. repeat those attitudes and they mm. might pick on the LGBTQ um, kid in, in, in school yeah. mm. or, the, or they might be racist in school, that sort of thing. Mm. They might shun the person who sounds like they've got a bit of a foreign accent, mm. that sort of stuff. And it is objectively bad for them. Like I wanted you to be the best version of yourself, yourself. and your dad was preventing that. So it seems like she has a she has work to do either either side. Either, either Whatever side, you decide, you got work to easy. do. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. But we yeah. understand like why you, you you know you feel like this is a big predicament, and we, yeah, we'll pray for you. In the meantime, as well, she can starve him of Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> they will call you a simp. Yeah, no, no, they will call you a simp. But that's a good well, advice. That is a good well, advice. No, 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 they will say you're simping. No, yeah. no, no, he should not be getting anything with that kind of attitude. <laughs> <laughs> he should be getting no action. No, nothing. No football match. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Exactly. But we're going to stand on it. What if he would just go outside? That's, I'm just talking about oh, the way of That makes it easier for him to break That's up now. Go outside. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. He doesn't deserve anything for that. So, so yes, so prayer and fasting and then also <laughs> fast him of that thing yeah, he wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 those love activities. Minister of Sim Parfait. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Well, they say, I like that one. Doing podcast. Yeah, was like, yeah, that boy, that boy. The man then will get on to us. I love that. But yeah, thank you for sending your dilemmas. And by the way, if you've got any more dilemmas, make sure you send them through and we'll do our best to answer mm. them yes, sir. so moving on now to the main topic mm. the main, main meal we just had the start uh-huh. we just had a starter main dish. Uh, i'm still hungry mm-hmm. so yeah obviously you are a political commentator i wanted the theme of the conversation to be around should black people care about politics because mm. i feel like a lot of us myself included a bit ignorant when it comes to politics some of us feel like it doesn't impact us. Whether I vote or not, there's a, there's a the new world order running the world anyway. Mm-hmm. They're going to pick... Yeah, I say gonna, especially <laughs> in the West anyway. Yeah, yeah. They're going to pick the leader. So it doesn't matter who you pick. Um, so yeah, in your view, just to start us off, should should we care? So can I add a small statistics to that right, right away? Ahead. Okay, because especially adding to his point as well, like with, in UK, black people makes up um, 2.5%, right, of the entire population. So yeah, to that, like it seems to me... Either way, anyways, either you vote or you don't vote with such, such percent that whatever way they want the vote to go will go that way. So what do you think? Yeah. Should we care about politics? I'd say for starters on that point, um, the margins in terms of how much when, when a party wins, mm. it's often by really small margins anyway. Right. So that vote will might be the might end up be being the thing that ends up deciding mm. one way or the other. Mm. Uh, as for should black people care about politics, I didn't care when I was um, 16. Yes. I think I remember I wrote a poem about the Iraq war when I was like 12. Other than that, mm. I didn't pay attention because I couldn't see how politics like affected my life. For me, I, I, I was born in Darlington, grew up in Birmingham. Politics was just old white men shouting at each other in London, mm. hundreds of miles away. <laughs> it, I didn't see the connection. Uh, and then I ended up working in human rights in Brussels and I started to pay a bit of attention because I worked in, in the stuff to do with like the, the fact that we sell weapons to Saudi Arabia, which get used to bomb hospitals and schools in Yemen, the fact that we're training Bahraini police officers who then torture people in, in, in Bahrain, that sort of stuff. And so I started to pay attention to what the politicians were doing. Mm. Um, and then I saw Brexit come on the stage and I thought, all right, this might make our human rights record even worse. <clears throat> and so I got involved in that. And then watching Nigel Farage come out with everything he did during mm. that during that time referendum <laughs> and win, the message that sent to me was maybe we're not welcome here. Yeah. Maybe if if that man has managed to convince the majority of people, is this home? Am I welcome? Should I, do I have a place in the political discussion? Because I tried. Mm. Um, I had 20 followers on Twitter at the time, um, but I tried. You did. You um, did well. I um, saw you every night. And the thing is, we have to get involved because otherwise, because we have every, just as much right to speak on, the, on this topic as anybody else. And I think the, one of my favorite things about um, the period of the 2016 to 2019 period was going around the country and speaking to people who were on the other side of the argument and realizing that they weren't the same as the people who supposedly represent leavers mm. um, because they were much more decent. 
Okay. Like the a lot of the rhetoric and the mo political moves that are that we can see as racist, that we can see as bigoted, are driven purely by poverty. They're driven by people that are desperate, and then the politicians say, "Hey, you don't have enough." It's because those people are taking it from taking you. Taking it from you. Mm. And so, and it ends up being a manipulation. And often we uh, remember. I think the origin of a lot of racial politics and racist politics came from a desire to basically split up working class people, get them fighting amongst each other, mm. so that they don't actually look at the people who really have the yeah. money and yep. really have the power. Yeah. And that's what we've seen so much over the last few years. And if we don't get involved in politics, things only get worse. Hmm. There are things that we can do to make things better. For example, all the studies show, I mean, Oxford University did this. It showed that if you've got a, well, if you've got an, a South Asian sounding name, you have to send 70% more job applications to get a call back when you're applying for a job. Uh, Nigerian, it's 80%. Hi. Middle Eastern, it's, it's 90%. Um, so we know that that basically, your ability to get a job and therefore life passes through a filter, filter of racism in the UK. Things that we could do on that one would be make it mandatory or make give tax incentives to businesses that use blind CVs. So you don't see the name or the sex or where they're from in the UK. So you can really open up the job market to everybody. You'll start to see more people from diverse backgrounds in those top paying jobs. And then the people from those backgrounds will be perceived better because we more, we'll be more used to seeing black CEOs, women That's CEOs, right. Northern that CEOs. That representation yeah. is important. Exactly. So there's stuff that can be done if the politics allows, but it doesn't change if the people who are currently in power stay in power. Stay in power. So politics affects every single one of us in terms of our ability to get a better life. Okay, I mean, very... I like that, yeah. Especially with the blind CVs, I'm wondering why that's not a thing. Yeah. That sounds like an easy fix. Yeah. Especially with that, that study proving that. Yeah. So that, that should just be a thing that everyone but should But then for. one may argue, um, and this is not my argument, but we gave Uzi's uncle, mm. Kwasi Koteng, a chance... First black <laughs> chancellor. <laughs> Didn't last. And then the whole market just went left. Um, yeah. What's your views on that? Uh, um, was he just a, a puppet? I think he was. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I uh, I remember I posted a, a, a meme on that one because um, that was Liz Truss's plan. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but she did it in the Nate. Well, she she propped up Quasi Quarteng as if he was the one behind it. And I and um, Quasi Quarteng when things went south, I, I posted this is Quasi Quarteng right now. And there's a scene from uh, the film Evolution where the, where the guy goes. I've seen this movie, the black dude dies first. <laughs> <laughs> and he really did lose his job first. Yeah. It's he mental. Was the first one to go. It was Liz crazy. Trust did this, put but, Quasi Kwarteng's name to it. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, and, and, and that's the thing. Whilst this government does go, goes, goes down the crapper, you're going to see the black names being, the, oh, they're the ones who crashed the economy. Oh, mm. it, was, it was Rishi Sunak. Oh, it was Swella Brave. It's a lot of finger pointing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, and then you'll get, eventually you'll get a Boris Johnson type, a uh, Mark Fronto type takeover, and we're the sensible ones. We'll take over the economy after these people have messed it up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Come and clean it up. So then what about um, local elections? Because mm. so I get confused. I don't know if you, have you ever voted, by the way? Oh, you have. God bless when? you. When? For the, the general one or the local ones? I'm the general voting. I've voted a few times. What about no. the local one? You know about the local one? Like, you know the local no, media. No, no, that, local I, I get those mails come through my letterbox, but I've never done no, that. Pay attention one. to it. No. No. Why are they important? Uh, so local yeah. ones will be your well local issues. So when your yeah. bins get collected, that sort of stuff. If potholes get fixed, that sort of stuff. Um, so it's if you have some issues in your local area that you want desperately fixed, vote for the party you think is most likely to um, get that stuff fixed. So that's mm. it's important on the local level, but it's not going to change the big sort of politics that I was just talking about, mm. i.e. the major, large social issues. But if it needs some stuff fixed in your area, that's, that's what local elections are. Yeah, that's what I'm Okay, and it just seems, though, that even if you're doing local elections, general elections, most people in power come from Eton or these... Mm -hmm amazing schools is it actually even possible for guys like us to dream to be in politics so maybe we'd care more if we could see people like us because even Kwasi Kwarteng no offense Uncle Kwasi but though you may look like me I don't relate to you because mm -hmm. you talk like you get he also went did he not also go to Eton or one yeah, of those I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure yeah one of those private but it's, 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 it's not even it's, it's not even the, the way he talks it's it's who he's decided to align himself yeah. align himself with um, uh, like they are not helping 
people who look like them at all. Yeah. Um, in fact, they're stepping on them deliberately. Mm -hmm. um, you had, uh, what's her name? Kemi Badenoch a couple of years ago. She said um, that it is illegal. Any, any teacher that teaches white privilege as a fact is breaking the law. Yeah, I remember that. Now, the thing that's messed up about that is white privilege is a matter of governmental fact. Because mm. if you look at the government website, it shows that if you are um, black, you are seven, seven times more likely to be stopped by police. The government race report, as I just said, shows that if you're black, you're less likely to get a, um, a call back, even with identical CVs and, and applications. So white privilege is a matter of governmental factor. She's t telling people it's illegal to solve it, <laughs> to, to, to talk about it. And you can't solve a problem if you're not yeah, allowed to talk, talk about, about it. it. Hundred. Um, so yeah, that whole idea of just because they, they, they're black, that means that they're on, on the right side of racism issues. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where were we talking about before? Sorry, where was going? So I was just saying, like, if people, if we can't see people that look like us in, yeah. in, in, in it, 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 it is hard work. And it's one of the reasons why I felt it was important to do what I did, because I essentially got lucky. I studied uh, EU law in the UK and in France, and then worked in EU affairs. Um, and so I had the skills and the knowledge and the academics to take on the issue of Brexit better than mm. the politicians. Mm -hmm. And so I could use that to get myself onto a platform. And I knew that by doing that, I would allow other black people who knew, who were experts in other areas to then to then fall on, to fall on that path. I see. Mm. Because I know that, like I said, when I was a kid, all I could see from politics was old white men all in white Westminster men, yeah. shouting yeah. at each other. Yeah. We need to uh, change, the, change the way politics. And things will get better. I'm really confident about that because essentially Gen Z won't stand for the shit. Yeah, mm. they will. <laughs> yeah, because that's what I was even going to ask you that going into the Brexit situation, right? Because I saw your uh, your recent post around um, the George Freeman. Because mm. you can start to see a lot of the government um, officials now that were literally Brexiteers mm. now doing a U turn and going on about the impact of Brexit and how what's happening on our economy right now. But you don't seem to see a lot of opera about it. Like everyone's just going on like. Because these are the people that lied to us and made us <laughs> literally put us, put, well, partly some of this situation we're in and this common economy to blame. Mm. Why do you think that is? Why do you think people are not really batting an eyelid about everyone just going on like as business as usual? I think we've been, we've just been bashed down on the issue of Brexit because mm. they basically, they shut us up. Like everybody is just waiting for everyone else to really take control of the situation. We're waiting, we we'll say, all right, enough's enough. And we have got a degree of pushback from the people. We're seeing strikes. We're seeing we're seeing protests. Um, it's not necessarily all being tied to Brexit because Brexit is just one of the things one that's, of making, the, that's yeah. making things mm. worse. But I mean, the majority of people in the UK, according to all the polls we're seeing, can recognise that Brexit is a mistake. Yeah. Um, and so it is just the politicians that are in the way right now. Is it? Listen. So with Brexit then, obviously, I did vote um, Remain. Um, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I did. 100% I did. Nigel Farage didn't convince you? Pardon? Nigel Farage didn't, he didn't convince that. you. Yeah. <laughs> it's because I was exactly. following you a lot. That's when I found you during um, uh, the whole um, Brexit referendum. That's when I found you. And it got me really interested, especially the 350 million on mm. the bus. Yeah. I just couldn't believe wild. people fell for that. I can before I even answer my question, actually, why do you think that resonated with a lot of people? Why do people believe it, even though it was proven to be a lie? It was, yeah. So it's about, it was, that entire referendum was about trust. Mm. So one, people who voted leave trusted one set of politicians. People who voted remain trusted a different set. And often when I'm talking to London-based Remainers especially, I tell them a story. I say, imagine if you are 50 years old, you live in the Northeast in Sunderland, Hull, Redcar, or in Wales in Swansea. And when you were 11, your dad lost his job because Margaret Thatcher closed the shipyard. She deindustrialized the Northeast, closed the mines, that sort of stuff. And so you hate the Tories. Mm. Um, you've always voted Labour, but nothing has ever gotten better for your town. Mm. There's no, been no investment. You've watched London get Millennium Dome, London Eye, yeah. underground <laughs> tube system, mm. new stuff every single Elizabeth year. Elizabeth Lyme. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and yet nothing comes to you. And why is that? That's because essentially, because Labour is always going to win in your area, neither party has any incentive to do anything for you because mm. the Tories are going to always lose. The Labour is always going to win. Mm. So there's no incentive there. So politics is pretty much forgotten about you. Ugh. And then you go through austerity, put through that by David Cameron. Mm. And so you are desperate for change. And the person telling you to vote for things to stay the same in the EU referendum is David Cameron. The person who's just financially strangled you mm. and everyone you know. That's 
nuts. Yeah, yeah. And and so <laughs> and so he's and so under those circumstances, when there's you look at this figure like 350 million is going to the EU, and they're telling you, hey, you could have a better life, a better if, you, life if you vote yeah. mm. for Brexit. Under those circumstances, if I didn't have an EU law degree. I would probably probably leave. Brexit. Wow. Hey, when you put it like that. Mm. When you look at the news around that time, they were interviewing farmers, mm-hmm. all of those are saying, yeah, I'm with it. And I'm thinking, majority of the people that uh, you employ in your farm are foreigners. Because they're the one that can do the job and then all of, and then you see now they're complaining about oh they can't even hire um I don't know if you lost all the, the I saw this little I know this has nothing to do with the UK one, but it's just an example that America are like because they they had similar stuff as well with the Mexicans, mm. and you see the farmers are complaining that oh the American the, the um Caucasian Americans they can't do the job, mm. they quit within a day, some mm-hmm. of them quit within a week, and they work a lot slower. Yeah. Then they want all their breaks, they want all of that stuff. But it's the Mexican the works twenty four hours straight, and it's same in England as well. And you Fruit see them all complaining now. And yeah. even just to add to that, uh, a lot of the farmers, the fishers that you know voted for Brexit, obviously were misled because now we're doing these free trade deals with mm. other countries, now they're competing. Yeah. With countries that weren't yeah, competing, they weren't with, competing before. with before. You yeah, know, exactly. I saw Australia and New Zealand, we just signed a deal with them. Now we're getting beef and stuff from there. And, and now the farmers are complaining, but I'm like, you lot wanted this. You wanted this. And, and this is the thing. So like, I, I always struggle between feeling really angry at Brexiteers and really feeling really sorry for them. Mm. And I think when I was um, doing the People's Vote campaign, so the campaign for a second referendum, I visited a farm in Anglesey and I spoke to this farmer and it was really painful to listen to because the entire Brexit rhetoric that we heard from people like Jacob Rees-Mogg was, we'll leave the EU and therefore we'll get rid of all the tariffs on stuff that we bring in. So we'll get cheaper food from all across the world and be hmm. flooded with lots of cheap food. And here's this farmer saying, I voted for Brexit because I listened to people like um, like Boris Johnson, mm. and I wanted everybody to buy British. We'll basically put up the walls, we'll wall off Britain, and everybody will be forced to buy British, and therefore my farm will do really well. Mm. But the Brexit they were going for was the exact opposite, <laughs> opposite of that. Opposite of that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 They yeah. got finessed. And yeah. they literally got lied to. And Money now their farm's yeah. dying, and this is supposedly done in their name. But I'm sorry, I don't, I don't really feel sorry for them, because the only reason why you'd feel that way, and based on what you're saying now, it goes back to their own ideology in the first place. Mm. It's a selfish ideology. Do you yeah. Exactly my point. And that's oh, let the reason, me close it off so yeah, all the money comes to me. And that's the reason why you and would fall for a lie fight. like that. Mm. I don't know if that makes yeah. sense. And that's the reason why I'm I like... I don't feel oh, sorry for them That's what I'm saying. That's the reason why you'd fall for a lie like that. I don't feel because sorry for them Because I was never really that much into politics. But I, I could was, tell yeah, we the people stay, that yeah. was peddling <laughs> this mess. No, the people that were peddling me this message is... Don't I have don't my trust. best interest. They don't, no, yeah, no. Like they don't have my best interest. That's right. my starting point. No, they I come don't like agree them with them. They're forex traders. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> They've really hurt you, haven't they? They've never got me. They've never got me. Every episode. They've never got me. 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 They've never got it's funny, even so, Nigel Farage, oh, I should have bought my facts, but aren't, isn't his wife or children German? Yeah, German, yeah, yeah, German. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've German. all got German passports. They've all got German yeah. passports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can now go to Germany or mm. even anywhere in Europe and study, mm-hmm. but us that used to just go to, like, oh, no, our no, friend, no, no. remember Rico, he could just up and left and went to Amsterdam, yeah, Amsterdam, no yeah. checks, no yeah. nothing. Now, he can't do that no can't more. Do that. And, that, and, that, and that's the thing about Brexit that makes it just completely evil because they deliberately went to the most vulnerable people, people. in the country. In the yeah. country. It, show, yeah, it shows, they took looked at the working class people who in 2016 had been through six years of austerity. They'd had their, their services cut, the NHS cut, their benefits cut for six years and they needed desperately, desperately for things to yeah. get better. Hmm. And these people knew that Brexit would make things worse. They knew that. In 2018, mm. there was a leak of the government's documents that said that whatever yeah. Brexit they negotiate, negotiated, it would make people poor. Mm. They did it anyway. They knew mm. people were counting on them to make their lives better, and they deliberately made it worse. That is That's crazy. insane. I'm yeah, telling did, you. Boris Johnson wasn't originally, he oh. wrote articles for both yeah. sides, That's he? right. Oh, it, it, it's worse. So like in 2011, he when he was mayor of London, he went on stage and said that um, London, and therefore by extension the UK, owed its economic success to being in the EU single market. Yeah. And he said, uh, um, under no circumstances in my view, will any UK government change that position. Mm. Um, and then in 2013, he said, um, uh, I, I, I vote to stay in the single market. I'm in favor of the single market. Uh, I, think, I think we should have to trade freely with our European friends uh, and partners. <laughs> Let's get Brexit done. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 
sorry. He wasn't as wet as that, was he? He was, that caught you off guard. I thought he was choking. <laughs> that caught you off guard. I thought he was choking. That caught you off guard. That caught you off guard. I thought he was doing choking. 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 That, that was, was good. good. That was good. So that he, was good. He, he's known that Brexit would hurt the UK and hurt people, hurt the most vulnerable people for a decade. Mm. And he did it anyway. Oh, do you know what? Boris was that guy from the dilemma. He jumped on the train mm. that was going to get him to be a prime minister. Yeah. yeah. That's Basically, what he did. That's what he did. And it's very cowardice. He just, he, they knew. He don't care about the people. I was reading. You know me? I over read. They were saying that because of Brexit and the fact that obviously freedom of movement um, has changed, it's Restricted. actually benefited black African nurses. Mm. Now we're getting a bit more, getting more nurses from Africa. Obviously, I'm not saying that is a, oh, a wonderful thing of Brexit, but yeah. could you argue that it's kind of been beneficial to other immigrants that wouldn't normally get a chance? Uh, I'd, I'd say that you can definitely argue that. Um, mm. There's, it's, with the, with the immigration thing, there's always a pro and con, it's a pull and a con, because you're literally one person moving from one country to another. So mm. any doctors and nurses we gain is a loss to, to, to Nigeria. It's, mm. it's, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's, a pro, it's a pro and a con, but, but the, there's often the argument that gets used that uh, the EU free, free market stuff was, sorry, free, um, free freedom movement, movement yeah. it was essentially racist because it gives a priority to white Europe. And I think that's simply an unavoidable thing of, allowing people the chance to work in multiple countries mm. because right now free and free, right now the ability to work in another country is kind of a, a privilege of the rich mm. because we can because most of us we can only potentially afford to study in or, or work in brussels or vienna or basically european countries how many of us can afford to go catch a plane to um, America, where I think the, vi the, the visa requirements, the, the amount of money you have to be earning hey, just to yeah. get there, crazy. or Australia, we can't afford that. <laughs> Europe's on our doorstep. So having that visa freedom within Europe is oh, better true. for us in mm. general. Because often we we, too often we talk about immigration only in the coming this way, but not the going, going out the other way. Because we could work in 31 countries across Europe, Europe. without having to apply for anything. Mm. That's gone now. That's, That's gone. gone. Just like that. Just like and that. And why is it actually, Oof. out of interest, why do you think when, when when people move from one country to here, it's immigration, but when British people move, it's we're expats. expats. Expat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> why, why do you think, how have we allowed that narrative to stay? Because oh, that makes man. it look like there's no immigrants on the other side. On the other side, side. yeah. Side. It's, uh, it's, it's the British superiority. It's the white yeah. supremacy. Yeah. It's, 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 it's that. Side. And That's... it's... It's the thing with um, with uh, the nationalism that came with Brexit, which is that you could tell just how insane that British superiority is. And I've got a couple of videos with it where I was just like, I got them to admit this point blank. Because like, mm. if you think that 27 countries need our country more than we need I saw them. that one. <laughs> yeah. I saw that one. I saw that one. Yeah. <laughs> He was trying to shake your hand off. <laughs> You're like, um, no, get away from you crazy person. Yeah, exactly. I, saw, I saw that one. Exactly. Like, Because the idea is that those 27 countries losing trade with one country would hurt them more than us losing trade with 27 <laughs> countries. Absolutely insane. The logic? You have, in order to believe that and to be sold by that argument, you have to believe that we're better than 27 countries, countries. combined. Hmm. And yeah. guess what? Have you seen how Brexit has gone for us? It's hurt, it's hurt the EU, yeah, sure. Mm. Not as much as us. Mm. <laughs> but is there any world where we just deal with it and try and make it a success? Can we make a success with Brexit? The, okay, so there are, there are five points that, I, that basically explain why Brexit is doomed to fail. One, all countries do most of their trade and the majority of their trade with countries that are physically closest to them. And um, mm. that's why America has deals with Canada and Mexico. That's why there's an association of Southeast Asian nations. That's why the African Union exists. Um, so that's that. Two, the biggest barrier to trade is having different laws. Because if you if the E didn't exist, you'd have to um, make your product to be compatible with 28 different sets of laws, hmm. which would make your costs go through the roof, which is kind of the problem we're seeing now with that's prices rising. Mm. Um, three, therefore it will always be in the UK's economic interest to have similar laws to Europe. Okay, yeah. Um, four, the one thing that Brexit guarantees is that we no longer have a say over the laws of Europe mm. because we're no longer, we no longer seat at the table. We can't vote in it anymore. Five, that means the UK, if we're out of the EU, is permanently having to choose between copying the rules of the EU you, yeah. in order to protect the economy, but that means we're copying rules that we no longer influence and the whole point of Brexit Why was to take leave? back yeah, control. Why change that? <laughs> So we end up with less sovereignty, less control than we did before we left the EU. Mm. Or 
we have different rules to the EU and trash the economy, which is what we're starting to see now. Yeah. So Brexit is a constant paradox where the only answer is you end it. Otherwise, you're stuck in that in that yeah. constant. Situation. So rejoining the single market won't fix it. Rejoining the single market will fix. Th that's my priority because mm. that means you fix the economic economic side of things, and the political side, the having control. Yes, that's important. But I think the poverty, cost of living crisis is the is the top is the, is the first priority. Mm. Mm. That's right. That's so do right. you think, um, would we have been more cushioned by the cost of living crisis if we were in Europe? Yeah, I mean... Even um, though some countries in Europe are struggling as so well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But, and the, the thing is, often you hear the Brexiteers point to other countries and say, Germany's going, risking recession right now, and they point to um, food prices. But yeah, it, it's almost it's a sign of stupidity if you can't understand the concept of multiple factors can affect a country at the same time. Okay, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. And think Brexit has just made it worse. As in every 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 sector of our economy is saying things will be better if we not for, if not for Brexit. Things will still be crap, mm. but they will be better if not for Brexit. I mean, mm. the government's own experts say that Brexit has done more long term damage to the economy than COVID. Wow! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because oh, so, they predict yeah. that Bre that COVID will reduce our economy by two percent in the long term, whereas um, Brexit is four percent. Okay, it's double. So it's a fact there. Yeah. So basically, we just need to rejoin. We, it, need, yeah. we need to go and beg. So <laughs> Tucker <laughs> tells him go beg. You rejoin. Mm. Tucker tells him go beg. <laughs> now, because now refuse. if you go back now, but then you know the terms gonna are going to be different. The terms, terms are going to be different yeah. now. But there, 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 will, there will be some stuff. Um, there will be stuff like we'll probably lose the rebate, which is the money that we sort of get as like a tax return sort of thing from the EU. But the benefits that we get from the EU massively blow massively, out of the water. Yeah. Okay. And that, in fact, like I think Germany and France pay more than they have to because they know that the overall it's a good return. Oh, okay. Um, so, would you ever get involved in frontline politics then to make this rejoin, rejoining the EU happen? I probably will do the whole apply for um, run for parliament thing at some point. Okay. Um, Amen. The priority right now is fixing the voting system because it's it's crap. It just doesn't work. So, um, is that the proportional representation yeah. and vote age to sixteen? Uh, as the, well? si lowering the voting age to sixteen would be 16. ideal mm -hmm. because. Um, a, if you can work, you should be able to um, uh, vote. vote. Um, fair point. B, fair point. because the voting age is currently 18, the average person, because you only get to vote every five years, won't actually get to vote until they're on average 20 and a half. Mm. Mm. So, okay. um, and if you br bring the voting age down to 16, then the average age for starting to vote is essentially 18. And also, you then bring the conversation as to who are you going to vote for and why into high schools. And I think that will make kids more engaged yeah, by definition. Yeah, that's a good that's point. True, isn't it? That's but I feel like they don't want to do that. On part. Yeah, because yeah, the, the conservatives that. know... Was it a video I was watching on your page? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, where he, he that was, was saying... Tobias Elwood. He said um, it was in 2019 when there was an option to let 16-year-olds vote in that election. He said, uh, while the age of voting is something that we should have a discussion on in this country, to suddenly thrust it upon us now, and we know that it'll probably favour one particular party, now is not the right time to do it. Mm. Imagine that. Imagine that, <laughs> just like that, and then it was wow. put to bed. Yeah. Translation: If we let sixteen-year-olds vote, they'll We're vote Labour, lose, yeah. and we won't be able to leave the EU. So, mm. and, and and I was talking about this um, uh, at a university debate recently. Like I was talking to eighteen-year-olds. Like he's talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, he's saying you would have saved us from all the problems relating to Brexit. You would have prevented us from having going through a pandemic under a Boris Johnson government. <laughs> Yes, it's your boy DT and this is the IMO Podcast. We are here live at the London Podcast Studio. I use code IMO20 to get 20% off. Peace. Shout out Amaka, Andrea and Obi. They steady working so we balling like Obi.